Qayda nurğun muğbur la borsumu, sələyənə vəziyyətən ayə vəzqısımı, bu yədə hazır işləncilik kuşur erişməkdə ayətə təsib olubatıdır. Həmə onundan istəyib, məşə, Amerikədəki işlik oqoq təşkilatlarına məsələn, xəlqəralıq, keçirim təşkilatı, bu, ayətə uyğurlarının vəziyyətə qəngəli bölüb, bu kuşurların erişiqə, ayətə zor tırışanlıq fiyasətdi. Məsələn, mənə yəqin bir dostum, yəni Ki Kumar əfəndə Başlığını ahir kumanı bilib gəgən bir insan, o yenə Uyğurlarının məsləsi ki, təximi dünyada xilqara kütrəb çıxışının nəhayəti rol oynamaqda. Həmdə yenə bir məsələ, mənəm də edqandan bolsaq, yenə hazır ki, yenə hökumətimizdən bu, bunun ikin davamlıq aldı Uyğur məsləsini kütrəb çıxışdı. Həmdə yenə hökumət üçün əlbəttə, burun qeyi kone taktik usulla arqılıq əməz, bu, mümkün bolsa, yenə bir usullarını yaratıb, davamlı qalda Uyğurlarının kişilik oqıq məsləsini xəlqərada kötürüb çıxış üçün təqim çoğun bir rol oynayışını ümid qılmə bu arqılıq ələqi biz Xtayqa çox qımərqən da vaxtı da Uyğurlarının kişilik oqıq məsləsi Xtayqa ərqədə və söhbət bələm gəlib bağlanacaq da bizdən qatıq kəngəl bülüqünümüzdən həm Xtayqa mı çox qım üçün qançılı kəngəl bülüqünümüzdən bildirişimiz gərək həm də Uyğurlarının vəziyyəti bugün kündə əlbəttə nəhayətdir Nəhəyətə təs, nəhəyətə müşkül Uyğurlağa asan əməz. Əmə şündə abısın bu şündə bir müşkül vəziyyətdə Uyğurlağa nəhəyətə bir büyük və lider çıxdı. O, bu səmə Rabiə Qadr xanımdı. Rabiə Qadr xanımdı özəngələ bilsələ nəhəyətə inqlavi ruhi nəhəyətə küşülük, əvvətlə millət nəhəyətə söyüdü. Şü üçün sələ əm Uyğurlağa üçün kürəş qımaqda. Mən əm Yəni, mən bağlan vaxtı Xtay hökümətdə Rabiə xanımdan işki oğlu, alım, abli kimini həmdə tutub, solab qoyub, ta ki, bugünkü kündə həmdə türümüdür bu. Həmdə biz şununqa, həmdə o uyğur kişilik oxuq məsləsi, bir ilə qəbir nəzəriyyə və bir məsələ nəs, bir əmli bir məsələ işkənləki, kündə uyğurlarının ayat mamatıqı təsir qılqan bir məsələ işkənləkini çoxum unutub qalmasınımız gərək. Qanan ikim, Uyğurlarının kişilik oqıq məsləsi əlbəttə bu, Amerikanın məsləsi ilə bulab qalmasından bu, bir xalqaralıq məsləsidir. Buna çoxum xalqaralıq cəmiyyət ortaq kömül bölüş gərək, həm Uyğurlarına tən yardım qiliş gərək. Şunun Rabiə xanımdan oqşaş bulmağın dövlətləri verib, oqşaş bulmağın qəyərif əllərindən dövlət rəqbərlərdən körüşüb, Uyğur məsləsini oturub qoyuşu nəhəyətə mühim rolunu oynaydı. Həmdəsələnin bu xitim mən alaydı Vaşingtonun Qızıqın qarşı alımə, həm də biz, həm də şünəmdən bir vaqtda, həm də Xtay hökümətin dağınlıq əyibləşmədən bir vaqtda, bugün kükündə yenə Guantanamodumu 17 Uyğurunun bağlıqını unutub qalmasınız mümkün. Bu, əlbəttə, bu 17 Uyğur məsləsi Amerikanın bir məsuliyyəti. Amerika hökümətinin çoxum, ulağın yaxşı qarşı gərək, ulağın kişilik oqoqun dəbsən qımasıq gərək, ulağın məyli biyək olsun, başqa dövlətlərə Nəhəyət yaxşı qılış gərək, həm də bunu da mən alaydı eytib ötəb gitmən ki, bu Guantanamo Uyğurlarının məsləsi də Roşən və Rəşad Abbaslan nəhəyət üçün rol oynadı, Lanan məsləsi nəhəyət üçün onu bölüdü. Ağırda mənə dəyədiqənim olsa, bu şu Tam Lentos kişilik qoqoq komitidinə davamlıq sələbilən bilib olduğunumuzdur, həm sələnin kişilik qoqoqunlarını, qoqdaydıqanlığını, həm Amerika Dövlət Məclisinin davamlıq sələyənin məsələnin oturuq dəbli ötəb gətməkçi. Onundan sırt, ən ahırda məşu Xtaydəki eləqi 28-ci əsas qanunu tüsəb çıxqan, həm onun qol qoyğan lağı oxşaş, həm Qirmaniyədə birlərin təmi ürlük etkən oxşaş mən işinəmə sələnin davarın adını ümid bə, çoxun bir kün sələyə qalıb qazın sələyə rəqmət. Now I would like to express uh, our deep appreciation to our keynote speakers this morning on behalf of Mr. Bikadir and uh, members of the World Uyghur Congress, uh, members of UNPO, and also NED for providing this excellent venue uh, for Ms. Louisa Cohn and her staff members, and for also Mr. Marino Bustashin and for UNPO staff members we have here Matthew and Emily with us and for all the members of the Uyghur American Association and members of the International Uyghur Human Rights and the Democracy Foundation staff members who made this 
uh, wonderful conference possible this morning. Thank you all very much. And the next I would like to invite our first panelists uh, to the table. Uh, so we'll start our first panel, which is the War on Terror, Persecution, Stigmatization, and Preventive Strike. And the biz, Jeganimizdan, Berinji Kusmina Baishlaimiz, and the man, Rabia Hanam Nangnamdin, at the end, is the Nutuksuz that began, Mohim Arab Aflamazra Rahmat Etim, and the Jeganimizdan Berinji Kusmina, and the Heroism of Harshi Urush. Xtaye kimet nong bunadam paynab uygurla aga karat kanziyan kesiye uygurla an kat kollaqlam bastrishi başında bu şu bir saat tamam işte azır selkeyin kalduk şu nabısma nahiydi yaşbul bunun da sözde idran nabısa human rights in China din yani xtaye kişilik okuk teşkilat din Sarah Merkin Hanım bunun da sır bu kişilik okuk nezer teşkilat din Dr. Sophia Richardson Hanım, Hanım ki, her karar alak geçirim teşkilat edin. T. Kumar Efendi, şu işkta yükümlülüğünün kandakti yarızdan bayanlı bu uygulanan basta olanlar meslek doksta, bizge özünün köz kararlarına sülepirdi. Onun için, Hanım ki, sual cevap. Eğer sual onla basa bulanın sözlüğünden sonra idgan olan Hanım kısanla oldu. Bu da onun tercümanı ben bulum. Anam bana ne kinci şüphelik tamak buldu ya? Şuna edip koyalım. I would like to welcome all of our panelists to the table. So. I can do this. After that, we have, I have set up two people there. Thank you. Now I would like to uh, introduce our speakers today of the first panel, and we are very delighted that they are here with us, and uh, they are all experts in their respective fields, and it's our great pleasure to have them. Our first speaker is Ms. Sarah McCune. Sarah McCune is a law officer and special assistant to the Executive Director at Human Rights in China. From 2003 to the beginning of 2007, she practiced law as a litigation associate in New York City. During 2007, she taught English in Hefei, Anhui Province, China. She received her BA in International Relations from Michigan State University's James Madison College and obtained her JD in 2002 from the University of Michigan Law School. And our second speaker is Dr. Sophie Richardson. Dr. Richardson is the Advocacy Director of Human Rights Watch's Asia Division. She has published extensively on domestic Chinese political reform, democratization, and human rights in Cambodia, China, human rights, and the Philippines. Appearing in publications such as the Far Eastern Economic Review, La Libra Bilgik, the Japan Times, Yong Ang Daily, the Journal of Asian Studies, the Nation, Bangkok, the Phnom Penh Post, the Wall Street Journal. She has also provided commentary on Asian issues to outlets such as Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN, The Guardian, National Public Radio, and the New York Times. Our last speaker is Mr. T. Kumar. He is the Advocacy Director for the Asia Pacific at Amnesty International USA. In this capacity, he has worked on numerous initiatives to influence U.S. foreign policy, including U.S.-UN relations. He also frequently holds meetings with senior officials in the White House, State Department, Department of Defense. 
Kumar has worked in several Asian and African countries and served as a human rights monitor throughout Asia, as well as in Bosnia, Haiti, Guatemala, and South Africa. He has also served as director of several refugee ships and refugee camps. He was invited by the U.S. military for a fact-finding mission of military-run refugee camps in Guantanamo and Panama that held Cuban refugees. Kumar frequently lectures at the Foreign Service Institute where U.S. diplomats are trained, and he often testifies as an expert witness before the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. He has also given numerous in interviews to CNN, BBC, and other news outlets. He is a professor at Washington College of Law's Academy on Human Rights and Humanitarian Law. He holds an advanced degree in law from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Kumar has served as a UN representative for Peace Brigades International and was a consultant to the Quaker United Nations office. He also monitors several elections around the world with the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe and with former President Carter. He assisted the Washington Board of Elections in running UN, U.S. election uh, presidential elections. He also served as a judge of elections in Philadelphia. Again, we are very grateful for your presence here, and uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Kuhn to begin. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah McCune. It's an honor to be here today. Um, this panel, of course, is on the war on terror and its impact on the Uyghur population. And I will be reporting specifically on some of the preliminary research that Human Rights in China, the organization with which I work, has done on um, a regional mechanism of anti-terror, and that is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Carl Gershman mentioned it briefly in his opening remarks, what started out as the Shanghai Five um, and ultimately became the SCO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and how that has impacted the Uyghur people. Just a brief introduction to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, the members are China, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. The Shanghai Five were the original members with uh, the exception of Uzbekistan, which joined later when the SCO was established in 2001. These member countries have a few very strong common interests. First of all, there's the matter of regional stability. Um, obviously, borders um, between the member states are uh, an important issue, as well as um, the particular role of the region in the war on terror with Afghanistan being located in the region, as well as Pakistan. The SCO has grown since its establishment in 2001. Uh, it is now allowing what's called observer states. And these are states that are interested in membership in the long term and interested in cooperation with SCO members in the long term, but aren't full-fledged members. They don't have you know, an actual say in the decisions of the organization. And these observers are India, Pakistan, Iran, and Mongolia. The SCO has also recently started um, allowing what's called dialogue partners, and two dialogue partners right now are Belarus and Sri Lanka. It's also started a process of conferencing and consultation with Afghanistan. So as we can see, the SCO seems to have a strong gravitational pull to it. It's attracting a wide variety of member states um, with competing interests. I mean, you have India on one side, Pakistan, Iran, um, as well as you know, major players like China and Russia. And so the role in the anti-terrorist, um, the anti-terrorism um, goals of the international community for this organization could be quite strong, uh, particularly, particularly given the dangers that the spread of terrorism in the member states would pose. 
Um, and also given that um, this organization could play a major role in, in the long term in promoting stability in Afghanistan. However, the particular human rights concerns come in when we examine the sort of alternative approach to anti-terrorism that the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has offered to these regional players to start with, but perhaps in the long term, the international community. When the SCO was established in 2001, um, they, the member states signed the Shanghai Convention on Combating Terrorism, Separatism, and Extremism. And this is an interesting document with respect to anti-terrorist efforts because it specifically links terrorism to separatism and to extremism. And in that sense, sort of bootstrapping the concepts of extremism and separatism and the fight against those two evils, as they term them, um, with the more internationally accepted anti-terrorism terminology. I'd just like to briefly mention uh, the definitions that are included in the Shanghai Convention. Terrorism is an act intended to cause death or serious bodily injury to a civilian when the purpose of such act by its nature or context is to intimidate a population, violate public security, or compel public authorities or an international organization to do or abstain from doing any act. So this is a fairly standard definition of the concept of terrorism. Um, it is focusing specifically on threats to civilians um, for the purpose of achieving particular political results. However, separatism and extremism are defined in this document with respect to the state. Civilians are not specifically mentioned in these definitions. Separatism is defined as an act intended to violate the territorial integrity of a state, including by annexation of any part of its territory, or to disintegrate a state committed in a violent manner as well as planning and preparing and abetting such act. And this definition, I think, poses particular concerns if you're talking about a minority movement for um, recognition of a particular ethnicity and of that ethnicity's claim to a particular culture or territory, as is the case with the Uyghur population. So this poses, you know, definite concerns with respect to Xinjiang and the Uyghur people. Extremism as well is not linked to harm to civilians, but it's an act aimed at seizing or keeping power through the use of violence or changing violently the constitutional regime of a state. So the SCO is an organization that, on the one hand, promotes anti-terrorism and in that sense is internationally acceptable, particularly since it's a regional multilateral organization which tends to provide more of a um, gloss of legitimacy as opposed to unilateral action. But on the other hand, the focus, along with the traditional sense of terrorism, on separatism and extremism causes serious human rights concerns um, with respect to how those definitions and that focus are going to be used in practice. And the group, in its public statements and its various documents, since its inception, has referred quite often to what they call dual standards in the approach to anti-terrorism. And they use this with respect to um, particular events in which maybe a Western state would call out particular member states of the SCO with respect to their anti-terror actions, such as um, the Fergana Belly incident in Uzbekistan, which had some human rights concerns associated with it. And they point to these dual standards as the reason why there needs to be an internationally accepted definition of terrorism. But uh, at the same time, it's raising the issue of whether uh, anti-terrorist measures 
can ever really fall into well, constitute a circumstance where dual standards, on the one hand having human rights and on the one hand having anti, strong anti-terrorism, um, you know, can really coexist. Um, the SEO as well focuses on non-interference and sovereignty. All of its founding documents refer to the fact that member states respect each other's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and will not ever interfere in each other's internal affairs. And this is something that China has often cited um, as reason, reasons why outside observers um, should not become involved in China's human rights situation. And we can see it echoed again here in the SCO. The SCO, in a few of its normative documents, does refer to human rights. Article 1 of the SCO Charter notes that one goal of the organization is to promote human rights and fundamental freedoms in accordance with the international obligations of the member states and their national legislation. And that was created in 2001, the Charter. However, in 2005, in the Ashtana Declaration, the SCO stated, in the area of human rights, it is necessary to respect strictly and consecutively historical traditions and national features of every people, sovereign equality of all states. And this is uh, a sentence that one hears quite frequently when China discusses its human rights policy, that the national circumstances of China, you know, the historical traditions, the Chinese approach to human rights needs to be respected and not imposed upon by international observers. In August of 2007, the SCO entered into a treaty on long-term good neighborliness. Its member states I'll sign this document, and Article 11 um, notes that the member states intend to cooperate in promoting implementation of human rights and fundamental freedoms. In August of 2008, the Dushanbe Declaration affirmed the members' commitments to protect human rights. However, the actual rhetoric of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization confirms the basis for fears about human rights and the protection of human rights. For example, in February of 2004, uh, in a statement issued by the group, it was noted that Hu Jintao and Vladimir Putin came to a common opinion that terrorists and separatists of Chechnya and East Turkestan are part of international terrorism. And so ever since that point, this has been reiterated that the separatist movements, so to speak, of um, East Turkestan are a part of international terrorism. And, of course, this is extremely questionable how they're defining separatism, how they're applying it um, to the people in Xinjiang. Um, it's not clear that uh, it's being applied in a manner that um, is unbiased and is not simply being applied to movements, civil society movements, uh, that China views as a threat to its regime. Um, similar rhetoric has been applied to the Tibetans, particularly after the March incidents in 2008. Um, in a speech by the SEO Secretary General at the International Conference on Security for the Beijing Olympic Games, the Secretary General stated that no circumstances of political, philosophical, religious, ideological, ethnic, or any other nature should be used to justify or sympathize with activities related to terrorism, separatism, or extremism, again linking the three. I refer to this in the context of the recent events in the Tibet Autonomous Region of the PRC, and acts of extreme hooliganism during the Olympic torch relay. He goes on to state, 
Let us not forget that extremists of all kinds thrive in the attention of mass media. Uh, they have turned into potentially the most difficult social political problems tied with inter-ethnic and religious conflicts and therefore call for constant attention and maximum concentration of all available resources. So we can see that the SCO is focusing specifically on ethnic minorities, Tibetans and Uyghurs in its anti-terrorist approach. So what's behind the rhetoric and what are the concrete threats to the Uyghur minority in, in particular in light of the anti-terrorism efforts of the SCO? Well, first of all, we have the military applications such as um, the summer of 2007 um, assemblage of troops that Carl Gershman mentioned earlier today. Um, there are regular so-called peace missions and anti-terrorism drills which seem more designed to intimidate populations rather than to accomplish specific anti-terrorist purposes. Moreover, this mechanism provides for a regional acceptance of classifications of terrorists. So one member state's terrorist is the entire group's terrorist. Um, and particularly given the definitions of terrorism, separatism, and extremism, uh, it seems that what truly defines the three evils, the criteria for when these evil are, evils are committed, it's rather fast and loose. There are no limiting factors. And this allows for politically motivated application of the labels, which will then result in six states focusing their attention on that particular terrorist group. It's not clear if there is an official finalized list of accepted terrorist organizations within the SCO member states. Um, however, the SCO has regularly made clear that the creation of such a list is their goal. They've noted that it's important to have a common definition of terrorism so, that's, so that who's considered a terrorist in one country is recognized as the same in others so that there can be no political asylum between the member states. And this is a big concern for human rights in the region given that these minority populations usually live along borders and there may be um, a stronger likelihood that they will be traveling between member states in hopes of seeking political asylum if they are persecuted in a country such as China. A few organizations in particular that were cited as terrorist organizations and a threat, therefore a threat, to all SCO members um, are the Islamic Party or Movement of Turkestan, the East Turkestan Islamic Party or Movement, and the East Turkestan Liberation Organization. And so we can see that China, at least, is very focused on having movements related to the uh, East Turkestan identity labeled as terrorists, and given China's track record, it's a strong concern that this is a politically motivated application of the terrorist label. Ultimately, I think one of the, the strongest dangers of the SCO is suppression of civil society groups on the basis of the application of the terrorist label. In one, one of the SCO documents we reviewed, legal grounds for resistance against extremism and SCO. Uh, the group notes that in China, laws against extremism are absent, but the resistance to various forms of extremist activity can be realized on the basis of other acts, specifically those that regulate the activity of public organizations. And these laws eventually allow for the hindrance or termination of such activity. So again, the implications for civil society are acute. 
extradition is also a concrete concern with respect to this group. There have been extraditions of Uyghurs between the member states, and it's not clear whether this is done specifically through the SCO mechanism, but it is clear that uh, the SCO will facilitate this process given the um, more cooperative relations between the countries. Uh, the most significant concern I, Human Rights in China has about the SCO is what's termed RATS, and that stands for Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure. This is the particular organization within the SCO that's charged with um, promoting anti-terrorism and combating terrorism. The RATS has created its own database um, since uh, it was officially begun in 2004, and it seems that the database has become more and more powerful since that time. They refer to um, an interdepartmental data bank analyzing um, the issues of drug trafficking. Um, they combine lists of terrorist organizations, and uh, this database apparently also has predicting features uh, to work out the models of joint measure, measures of SCO members based on the information contained in the database. Uh, one article issued by a Russian magazine noted that the SCO has resulted in a affirmative list of terrorists along with 400 last names and more than 250 terrorist acts um, avoided. So we can see that RATS is a very powerful organization, but there are strong concerns about data mining and racial and ethnic profiling. The Special Rapporteur of the, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms while contra counteracting terrorism cited the particular threat of the SCO, noting that this sharing of data and information is not subject to any meaningful form of oversight and there are no human rights safeguards attached to data and information sharing. And given the increased use of technology in both terrorism itself as well as anti-terrorist measures, I think this is a cause for concern, um, what data is being exchanged. There needs to be greater transparency and we need to know more about who is being targeted and whether or not such targeting is done using racial or ethnic profiling. So in sum, I think the primary human rights concern is not so much how the SCO as a regional organization affects external relations, but how the SCO facilitates cooperation on certain dangerous issues on which its members agree, namely suppression of their own populations when those populations pose a perceived threat to a state regime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah, <coughs> for your excellent explanation of the SCO. Mən <gülüyor> Yani xtaay hükümeti davatkan şu kadar rezillik karşı turuş. Birisi terörizm, yani birisi bölgünçülük, yani birisi dini radikalizm. Hem de terörizmda bu Şanghay Emkarlı Teşkilatı'nın terörizm bəgən zahat de, hem de xalqaralıq zahatla yıqın ki. Dekin hem de bölgünçülük ve dini radikalizm ne digen çağda, onu da azalsan bu, bu hükümetlerini ki, Fakatlam öz özgü devletlerin işte gibi muşu uygurla koşuş, bu ekipte bu tabi çeçenlik koşuş, bu şimdi aşağı devlet kebrak, kısm tehdit ilip kilitgan, 
milletlerge karşı bastırışına asas kılıp ulanı mı? Şu terörizm, örgünçülük, şu kadar rezil güçte birge krizi. Şunda gruplarının kanuni hukuk olmasını, kişilik hukukunu kendilerine defsen kılışı arkılıp. Ola hazır elik bir devlet demez, hazır hem de şu altı devlet onun nizdir. Yeni nurgun elik. Nazara içi devletler, Hindistan, Pakistan, İran diyende. Şuna arkılık, hem de bu diktatör devletle boğanlık için şuna kolu arkılık. Özünün teritoriye birliğini asas kılıp, kişilik hukuk meselesini çerke kekip, gerçi bir kançıktan bu kişilik hukuk meselesini özünün nizam namları işe ve vekil işimler krizgen basın, fakat şekilde krizgen emniyet onda işinin yokluğunu. Şunun en ahırda bu kızın çıkan kolu alısı, şu Şanghay Emekarlık Teşkilatı bu bir erbi birlik oluş sütüden bulanın asaslık məqsidi şu, özünün devlet təvəli gidi ki, özge Karşı turgan herkanda grupların kişilik hukukunu defsende kılışan şu, şu arkalık şu gruplarını yoktuş. Birden teklif çırganda kalan beyci onun kaşıkı bir andesip onun için yoktu bir işten ibare. Şu an kısık çıkılıp müşinçilik şu anda burayı bulana unutuğunu kim? İngilizce'nin uygulaşıkı tercih edip sizlere taht vermiş. Efendim. Thank you very much and our next speaker is Dr. Sophia Richardson. Thank you for inviting me to be here with you this afternoon. I think out of deference to uh, uh, people's perhaps superior desire to eat lunch than to listen to me talk and to Aleem's fortitude in translating, I'm going to try to keep my remarks fairly short. Um, I have to thank very much UNPO and the World Uyghur Congress for inviting us to be here this afternoon. Um, some of you may know that several years ago Human Rights Watch awarded Rabia uh, an honor that we give out annually to human rights defenders. Uh, it's always a privilege and an honor to be working with her and with Aleem and to many other friends in this room. Also, many thanks to the NED, which is such a stalwart friend to so many different groups in need and to have hosted this, uh, this event this week is really, I think, testament to that persistence. Um, very briefly, our perception, Human Rights Watch's perception of the problem in Xinjiang is essentially the Chinese government's intransigent insistence on confusing Uyghur nationalism or simply the practice of Islam with separatism and terrorism. Uh, and that that confusion leads to uh, the imposition of highly restrictive uh, practices with respect to religion, education, basic daily life. Uh, this is, these are dynamics that are similar to what we see in other parts of China, I think to that is, is the most frequent comparison. But I think the, the intrusions on people's daily lives in Xinjiang really are quite noteworthy. I mean, the fact that if you want to work for uh, the, the, the provincial government or the autonomous region government, uh, you can't practice Islam, that it's now extremely difficult to educate, give your children a religious education. These are the kinds of restrictions that uh, I think are quite pervasive and lead to a great deal of hostility. In thinking this morning about uh, what's different now or what has changed since the beginning of the war on terrorism, I think there are just a couple of quick points I would like to make. Uh, arguably, one of the biggest problems uh, that's eventuated since 2001 is that the U.S. government in its relentless prosecution of the war on terror effectively gave Beijing carte blanche to do whatever it thought was necessary to suppress whatever it thought was terrorism in any part of China. And so in instances or on occasions when in the past I think the U.S. government and others would have been very vocal and critical of the Chinese government's actions it's been much quieter in the past seven or eight years, and that, I think, has sent precisely the wrong message to the Chinese government uh, that, in effect, encourages them. Arguably, one of the biggest mistakes, I think, was putting the East Turkestan Independence Movement on the list of terrorist organizations. This is a group whose very existence remains in doubt, so how the U.S. Uh, feels it's appropriate to actually put it on a list of banned groups, I think, uh, poses some interesting logical and philosophical questions. Uh, Sarah has already spoken in much more detail and with much more eloquence about the Shanghai Cooper Cooperation Organization than I have, but 
or than I could, uh, but I just want to point out that one of the other big differences between 2001 and now is the Chinese government's influence, its reach, its power internationally, uh, and, and what the consequences of that have been. If we look even specifically at the issue of the Uyghurs at Guantanamo Bay, all of you are extremely familiar with the situation that although the, the 17 Uyghurs at Gitmo were cleared for release in 2004, they all still remain there, mostly because the U.S. has been incredibly reluctant to take them, and indeed many other countries have been reluctant to take them too. I think it is extraordinary that uh, the main way I now remember which seven or eight countries in the world still have relations with Taiwan is that even those governments were approached uh, uh, to take the Uyghurs because the Chinese government had mounted such a thorough international effort to try to prevent anyone from taking the Guantanamo Uyghurs. I would also like to reiterate the point that Hans Hogreif made earlier, that it is outrageous that the United States government wants the Chinese government to behave better or differently or in conformity with international standards with respect to due process, while it refuses patently, blatantly to do so itself uh, for these men. Uh, one other point to make about China's rise and its reach with respect to Uyghurs uh, involves the case of, and I really beg your forgiveness if I don't pronounce this properly, uh, a man named Adil Hakim Jan, uh, who is a Uyghur who was captured in Pakistan in 2001 and eventually made his way to Sweden, where in 2006 he applied for political asylum. It was only just disclosed last week the details of his case after he was successfully granted asylum about a month ago the level and the kind and the pervasiveness of the pressure that the Chinese government had placed on the Swedish government not to grant this man political asylum. Uh, you could, there are several stories circulating on the Internet now that have the details of this particular man's case. But you have to wonder about a government that is that pervasive, that's that persistent, that raises these issues at even the very lowest levels of the Swedish government, about one man, one man, about whom there was no evidence. You know, he had gone through the political asylum process in Sweden, which, as we all know, has a reasonably sturdy judicial system. Uh, I think we can reasonably assume that if they didn't find anything problematic, there wasn't anything to be found. And yet the Chinese government pushes back and pushes back and pushes back. And as human rights activists, I think, it really is incumbent on us to ensure that, these, that this particular group of men at Gitmo, against whom there is no evidence, are not sent back to some sort of situation where they have a well-founded fear of persecution. We will have failed if that happens. Um, we've made a number of recommendations over the years to the Chinese government, few of them will surprise you, uh, about rolling back the constraints on religious practices and the ability to have certain kinds of education in Xinjiang. In more recent years, we've tried to make recommendations that look more specifically at minimizing what we see as rising tension between Uyghurs and ethnic Han in Xinjiang. Uh, this is not the fault of, I don't mean to suggest that this is the fault of Uyghurs. I think it is a natural outcome of, of policies and practices that are profoundly discriminatory. I don't know if those get any better hearing in Beijing than any of our other recommendations. But I think the reality is that unless some of those practices change, we're in for more violence and more turbulence rather than less. Um, obviously, we've encouraged the U.S. government and others to accept the Uyghurs from Guantanamo. But I also have a higher expectation of the U.S. and other governments to find new and different ways to talk about uh, the, the situation of Uyghurs. I think it is most unfortunate that we really only hear rhetoric out of supposedly rights-respecting governments when there are problems. Because I think that only reinforces the kind of stigma and discrimination that we see around the world, that Uyghurs are somehow problematic, their situation, their status is a little bit unclear, they're Muslims, are they Chinese, aren't they? Nobody's quite sure what to make of them. I think we'd really like to see some clearer rhetoric saying, you know, that this is a group that has been seriously persecuted both inside and outside China and that its rights are no less worthy of being defended than anyone else's. I'm going to stop there and yield to Kumar, who will, as always, be more eloquent than I.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be very short. We are running late. Uh, but I would like to touch on how war and terror is helping China in terms of suppressing Uyghur peaceful expression. It's not to fight terror, but terror is being used. Anti-terrorism anti is being used as a tool to muscle and abuse Uyghurs. We have been working on abuses against Uyghurs even before 2001. But we suddenly saw a shift in rhetoric as well as actions by the Chinese against Uyghurs in China. So I would like to divide the issue into two categories. One is local, how they are dealing with that. Second is international. In domestically, one of the main issues we noticed was that Earlier, whenever who was charged for separatist or some other offenses, suddenly they all became terrorists. And also, Chinese are using terrorism as an excuse to silence any peaceful dissent in Xinjiang, especially by the Uyghurs. And we have seen an increase in execution of political prisoners. Again, the cover is we are fighting terrorism. So whether President Bush succeeded in fighting terrorism or not, definitely his rhetoric has helped Chinese to crush and abuse Uyghurs. In that way, we have to say Chinese are much smarter than President Bush in using that war and terror how internationally it's helping. Again, I want to divide that into a couple of small categories. First, any criticism from overseas, from different countries, to China, saying that you should not abuse the rights of Uyghurs, they turn around and say, this is war and terror we are fighting. That, so that really helps them to defend them from foreign criticism. Second one, most importantly, is they have been using the war on terror as an excuse to urge foreign countries to hand them over the refugees who have fled Xinjiang to other parts of the world. We have seen in the Central Asian republics Pakistan more increasingly, Nepal, and other countries. And we have documented that people, some of the people who have been returned, have been executed. So what really helped China was that when people flee China, Uyghurs flee China to protect themselves, the war on terror became an excuse for China to drag them into that net and say, hand, up, hand us over back so we can deal with them here. So the Uyghurs have nowhere to go. Domestically, they have been muscled and abused in the, in the name of war and terror. Internationally, they have been, wherever they go and sh seek shelter, they have been abused by being handed them over back. So the war and terror basically have hurt Uyghurs than many other people in the world because of these dynamics. Other countries, at least people who face abuse in a country can run away to other countries. But those countries from where they ran away will not have the muscle and power to push countries to hand them over back. The third one is, of course, as Sophie mentioned, the Guantanamo Uyghurs. The Guantanamo issue is something, it was all over the news, 
and they could not able to find, US I mean, to find any one single Uyghur being guilty of, of being connected to terror, terrorism. So that shows even the people who fled China, Uyghurs who fled to Pakistan, Afghanistan for safety did not join the armed extremist terror groups to achieve their goals. There may be exceptions. I am not an expert on this. But the real sad thing happened in Xinjiang, oh sorry, in Guantanamo, was US alone. US also allowed Chinese intelligence officials to come and interview Uyghurs. But fortunately, because of international pressure, US decided not to return them to Chincha. We hope other countries will also have the guts to say no to China from returning Uyghurs to, to China to face abuse there. So these are the abuses we have seen. We have seen war and terror being abused, exploited by the Chinese, and unfortunately, powerful countries are not standing up to China and say, you are abusing war and terror or anti-terrorism for your own political ends to suppress a legitimate grievance of, of an ethnic group called Uyghurs. That's where foreign countries fail. U.S. also, under President Bush, they went one step further by listing ETIM as a terrorist organization. There are serious questions why ETIM was listed. Number one, the basic understanding of U.S. anti-terror law says U.S. citizens would have been harmed. But to our knowledge, ETIM was not involved in those abuses. Secondly, the announcement that ETIM is being classified as terrorist group was mentioned in China, not in U.S. That is a political decision, not an anti-terror decision that was made by the Bush administration at that time. So again, Uyghurs face numerous challenges because of war and terror rhetoric that permeated last eight years. But we hope with the new administration here, it will change to ensure that China is being put on the spot to inform that they will not be allowed to exploit war and terror and, and abuse an ethnic community in voicing their grievances in a peaceful manner. Until and unless it does, the war and terror being waged internationally will be called into question whether it's war and terror against terrorists or war and terror against ethnic minorities who have been abused by their respective countries. And those respective countries abuse war and terror to achieve their goal. Hope our administ new administration here will take this as a challenge and to ensure that war and terror is not abused by the governments to silence Uyghurs and others. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Richardson and uh, Kumar, for your excellent, concise, and uh, to the point <laughs> speeches. And I'll just do a brief translation, summary translation of your points. Then this panel will be over. Ben de hazır bu işki şehsen hazır size betep geri yandı tutulanın ayda kısıkça mezmunene asaslık mezmunların çöndürüp öğütüme anankin şu şüphelik tamamını başlayınız. Şu an yeni bir işki minut takıklı olalım. Dr. Richardson hanım basa başta elbette bu şu UNPV Dünya Uyghur Kulti yani değil diyen de hem sık bir kur teşekkür etti olanın yardımına hem özünün teşkilatının Human Rights Watch, yani şirkoku nezler teşkilatının 
ilgiri Rabia Hanım türümüdü vaxtı da özünün jıldı xan çok mükafatını şu Rabia Hanım'a bəgən. Şununla bu hanım asaslıq hem de Xitay hükümetinden bu şu terörizm məsləsi gəlgən çağda heç xanda qilqi, heç xanda bölmək məsləni. Tinçlik bilən bu Xitay hükümetinden narazılığını bildəgənim onun terörist edib. Şıxıb aşı Xitay'dan xoş bulmaydıqan hər xanda uyğun terörizmin bağlıqla mı onu ucuq turbatqanlığını. Hanın ikin bu şu Uyğurlar Müslüman boğanlıq için İslam dini ne bula şu bağını da qatdıq bas durup dini cihətdə Uyğurlarını boş koyup həmi gəlini. Sözler pipti, anın ikin, yani eşkim an birinci ildi ikin, bolub mu on birinci ildi dəbirdi ikin, Xitay hükümdü xalqaralıq terörizm qarşı kürəşdən payını Uyğurlarını nəhayət kən kələmlik bas durup bu prosesindən yetib ya gəlini. Xağan, həmin şu cihətdə, həmin Amerika mu, ma Irak qurşu, o qurşu boğanlı ikin, Xitay hükümetinden ve Uyghurla adlanmış terörizmde bastırılmış ise bir köyüzünün kıskanlığını. Anan ikin Xitay'daki o meseleki anca kongul bilmek yanlığını, bunun bir hata bir şey yanlığını. En çok hatalık yani Şerq Türkistan İslam hareketini Amerika hükümeti hem de bu terörist hükümeti, terör teşkilatı edip onu tizimdeki kırgaz yanlığı. Çünkü bu Şerq Türkistan İslam hareketi de yani hem de Azir hem de Nurgun Karaşlığa karganda bayi yokluğu mu bir gümanlık bir teşkilatlığını. Bunun da üstüde yani Xitay hükümetinden o şu Şanghay Emkarlık Teşkilatı'nın paylanan, paylanıp Uyghurlarına kanda zerbe yer vatkanlıktı. Yani o ne ilgir ki, not kusurduğun hanım sözler yaptı, lakin hem de bu ayarlanan dediğine, 2001 yılındaki İhtiyar Hükümeti'nin küçü bilen, 2009 yılındaki yani bugün küçü de zor pərik ba, bugün ki kündem İhtiyar Hükümeti'nin ayeti, bir kudretlik, bir küçü bulup, şekilinip, halk aralık, təsiri, teknik küçülük bu okut vardı. Yani mesela bu şu 17 gün tanımadık Uyghurlarına meselesi kıkarsak, bu nahayet iyi bir körünüp durdu. Çünkü Xitay hükümeti dünyadaki barlıq devletlerine, hatta Xitaylar diplomatik münasibet yok, Tayvan'dan münasibet var devletlerine mühendisçilik besim kuvvetlerine. Şu sebepten bu Uyghur'un Uyghur kalan devletlerinin amay vatkanlığını, hem ilişkin koka vatkanlığı Xitay'ın adresinde. Yeni birisi, hem de bir misal kıldı, hem de Adlı Can Hakim, Nazır Şirifsiyyada siyasi panalıq tilip, tilip kalan. Onun hem de 2006 yılında, 2 yılında işte Aramban Tesli siyasi panalıqını aldı. Bu şey, iki yılın işte Xitay hükümetinden kançilik derecede Şivit Siyah hükümetinin bir isim kılıp bu bağlı siyasi panalıq bəyməslik dolusunda materiala yakında çıxdı bir hayatının aldı da. Şunun için görüldü ki, bol ki deydim, Xitay hükümetinden bir koyup verilgen Uyghur balını bağlıqa siyasi panalıq bəyməslik için Aşı Devleti'ki kançilik bir isim kılanlığının yani bu 17 siyah kançilik bir isim kılanlığının düşen gelip oludur. Yani. Şunun için de hem de Xitay hükümeti şu başka devletler gibi katkı bir isim kılıp hazır bu Uyghurlarını amaslık doğusunda hem de kıvat edin. Hani ki, bu şu özünün təşkilatının, yani kişilik hukuk nəzlerb təşkilatının Uyghurlar məsləsi de yani, Nurgun ilgiri nahi de yaxşı doktorlardan yazılanlığı hem hazır Xitay hükümetinden Uyghurlarına bu şu mağribinin yol koyuş, dini erkenliğini koyup veriş məsləsi de. Hani ki, bu olup mu bu şu Uyghurlar bilen Xitay'nın arası ki hazır ziddiyyatını azayt iş. Hem de bunun əmisi Xitay'nın siyasi səbəbini hazır Olup mu bizden vatandaşlar ki Uygurlar ve Xitaylı arası ziyaret beğenmesi keskin bir şartlarla aldın ilişki rekleri ne? Bu mesela Uygurlar ve Xitaylı arası toplulukları çıkıp böyle bir zorluk faaliyetlerine bulup kitlesine aldın ne? Ağır bomba idrarlarını süzlep etti. Ama Amerika hükümetinden basan 17 gün tanım Amerika Uygur ne? Ulanın kişilik okuduğunu örmet kalan asasta ulanı bu şu Amerika gayri ki başka devletlerde kuyup bir şey. Hem şunun bilen bir vakitte hem de Uygur meselesine hakikaten hem de bula. Uyghur hem de Müslümanlar bulup kalanlık için hem de bu terörle münasibli bağ bağlanışı, bağ bir millet emez de gidin. Uyghurlarının bulsa, de Xitay hükümetinde bir diktator devletinin kolu kent kölemdeki bastırış uçur vatkanlığına hem de Xitay hükümetinin şu bağına da terörizm kürsünün paylanıp Uyghurlarını tekimi işte naziyan keçilik kuvatkanlığına halka arada çokum anem kılış gerek. Anan ikin bizden Tik Humar Efendi sözüldü. Tik Humar Efendi sözüldü genç adımı yani şu Xitay hükümetinden halka aralık terörizm uruşunun paylanıp Uyghurlarını Kandak türde, bulup mu şikil bulanın siyaset değil. Birisi devlet işi siyaset değil, birisi halk aralık siyaset. Devlet işi de o hem de her kanda bir beşini kötüleyen Uyghurlan terörizm, bölgün ki yani dini radikalizmi bağlaklan, bulup şerh Türkistan İslam merkezi bağlaklan, halisane tutup ucuk durup, yani Nurgun Uyghurlanı bulup mu şikil birinci ve on birinci sinde birden ki bulanı Uyghurlan iç sanının köpeği yanlıkını sözler bitti. Halk aralık bu sağ ıhtay hükümeti, özünün Uyghurlanın hukuklarının basturuşunu, o terörizm münasibetlik deplam, halk aralık herkanda bu şu eyiplişini çetki kaktı, yani karı bu mu de. Şununla anandakin sır, yani 
Xitay hökümeti müş terörizm bağımsız bilen çetelik keçip çıkmanı. Her kanda uyğunu bula terörist dedi. Yani bana bilen etraftaki müşü, müşü otur Asya devletler, Kazakistan, Karakistan, Özbekistan ve Pakistan, Nepal digendek bu devletler ve bazı devletler besim işletiş arkalık. Özden cinni kutuldur için bu devletler keçip, keçip çıkan uyğurlarını mecburi kaytırganlığı, hem nurgunlarını kaytırganlığı için tümlük taşlanganlığı bazılarının itilganlığı hatta. E, şunun kadar dedi, müşü Amerika hükümetinin ama bulup mu bu uygulamanın kaytılmağını yakışı buldu. Yani kalkan devletlerin ama o şoşun devletlerin ama bir jüretlik aldı. Hıhtayla yaktep, e, cinin sağlam kılıç için geçip bağlayan uygulamanın kaytılmasını e, talep kılımız. Dip ötep kettik. <coughs> Şunun da en muhimi hem de bulup mu Amerika'nın e, azır hem de ümit bu yeni hükümette Obama hükümet. Bu hükümet ama hem de Hıhtay hükümeti de o çıkış karar aldı. Hıhtay hükümetinden kalkararlık terörizmde bağlı kılıp uygulamanın bastırış hukukunun yokluğu. Hem de nurgun hatalıklarına, yani bu iş hükümeti devirde ödülgenliği, bir közünün kıskanlığı, yani Şerh Türkistan İslam Hareketi'nin teoriz teşkilatı da ilan kalanlığı sebebinin Hıhtay'a bir zor bağını bopırıp, Uyghurlarının kendi gülümde bastı olanlığı. Yani olup mu, hem de Şerh Türkistan İslam Hareketi'nin teoriz teşkilatı da ilan kalanlığı, onu Hıhtay'ın paytaklı Beycan'ın ilan kalanlığı, bu tasadiyi bir ilan kalanlığı, yani bir siyasi karar işkanlığını sözle bütüp, şu an ahırda şu, bu işi yeni hükümetinizden, hem de Hıhtay, Amuş Uygur meselesi de hatta yürüme de katkı besim kılıp Uygurların halde sahne terörizmle paylaşıp bastım alık bastım kola kelturuş kereyek şunun emanlarının dikkatli rehmet deydi. Rehmet ona. Yes. Okay. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Miss McCune and uh, Dr. Richardson and the Chief Kumar for your excellent remarks today in the first panel, and we appreciate very much for what you have said. And Azram de Brinjim Anima Akhlaisi Shunanga Bo Shkikhanim Brependim Gebokhtim Khatish Oshesh Momah, American and Kalkaral Ketchum Teshlati, American Ki Mushu Shlik Okok Nazar Teshlati, American Ki Khtai Shlik Okok Teshlati, Shchong Mushik Shlik Okok Teshlati, Bashkhlan Bugin Kilip, Bosorunda Bizge. Mushkhtay hükümetinin terörizmden payını ve şanhem emkarlık teşkilatının kolu bilen Uyghurlarını kanda bastırış hakkı da sözde hep bergenine Allah'a iyi de rahmet bir çağırmak çevirtin. Rahmet. Bunda bize Esselamu Aleyküm, Eziz Meymanlar. Hemenlerden vaxtı kayıtıp girip, cayınlarını tepip otağınlığa köp rahmet. Bunda bize bizden jığınımızdan çüştün ki ki devam Kısı hazır devamlı işidir. Şunun ayamınlarının zan koyup, dikkat bilen, her bir bu şu sözlük içinin sözlerini yakışı anlayışınlarını dalep kılma. Yani birisi kolonlarda telefonlarını iç bakan basanlı üçünü ötünler sayırır mısın? Abaytın bir kan çıktım sayırıp gitti. Haydi bir hem de yakışı tersir bom diye çıkıp sayıraydı gana hemen aslında üçünü ötünler. Yani birisi ilgi içine bir şey paslamı oranlarından durup birden çıkıp birden kırıp cümanla bu bak bir yaman tersir bu yerdeki. Yani birisi sırtık çıkanlar çıkıp yok atlam gitmeye kayıt kırsanlar. Çünkü kağan çıkıdığında çıkamayızla karab kaldık. Yani boş bu kası bu oranla. Yani birisi bir kadın bir kaya ilgi hem de emanlan ayeti, örmetke, saza ver, dünya uyğur kultiyden bizden en müvete verileri, vatene azat bozu, vatene mandurgan adamla asla. Şunun hem de bir yerde boğandığı ayeti tertiplik, insanlık bir yakışı bir təsir kaldıraylı. Ve kut kut kut yok olan yapla bulmasın. Rahmet onda bize. Onda bize hazır Mehmet, dünya uyğur kultiyden mağandı reis Mehmet Efendi siz mi? Müşakkat çıkamsı siz tercimalıkını siz kısınız hazır. Şuna iki günlük ne? Bunda bize, thank you, I'll just turn the panel to Henry Shijewski. Thank you, Alim. Um, my name is Henry Shijewski, I'm the project manager at the Uyghur Human Rights Project. Uh, I don't pretend to speak Uyghur as well as Alim, so I'm glad that uh, Mehmet Tohti is going to uh, translate for us uh, here today. Um, uh, Uyghur, uh, um, welcome to this afternoon's session. Um, this is titled Religious Freedoms, Constitutional uh, Right in Vain. Uh, we have uh, three distinguished uh, experts on Uyghur human rights issues. We have uh, Miss Amy Riga, who is the principal researcher at the Uyghur Human Rights Project. Which one is working? Uh, 
Düştünkin ki programımız uygarlığın kişilik hukuk meselesi gibi merkezli şudu. Bizden üç naite köz görünüyen sözlü güçümüz var. Şu an tanıştırıp gitmek için. Birisini Emi Roger'daydı. Bu uygar kişilik hukuk programımızı dışlayırken tatkı kaçıp olup. Uh, we also have Kara Abramson, who is the Advocacy Director at the uh, Congressional Executive Commission on China. Karen Dickinson? Kara Abramson. Karen Abramson, the Congress of And we also have uh, Louisa Griever, who is the Program Director uh, for East Asia at NED. Um, so I'm going to just turn over uh, to the pa uh, to the panelists, and Louisa is going to go first. She has a presentation, and then will be followed by Kara, and then Amy, uh, and then after that we'll have a Q and A session. Yani üçüncüsü Louisa Hanım, bu Louisa Hanım mı şu NED'nin Xtay Divizyonu müdürü mü şu uygulayıcı yardım kıyam? Şu birinci olup şu Louisa Hanım da sözü teklif ediyor. Stand by. Okay. Thank you, Henry. I will combine a discussion of some of the human rights issues for Uyghurs with a discussion of NED's interest in these issues. And I'll also try to make you homesick. Photo credits go to Nuri Turkel. And Miles. Miles. Kevin Miles. Kevin Miles. That's him. Kevin. Kevin again. He's the former researcher for the Uyghur Human Rights Project of the UAA. And first I'll show you uh, some illustrations of the issues that your speakers already rose uh, brought up this morning. Uh, the contrast between government propaganda and the reality of life on the ground. There's Mal. The right to one's own language is a major issue. Cultural issues. We're so happy to know that Tokti Tunyaz is now released from prison. Here's a prime illustration of religious issue, freedom issues that I'm sure Kara and Amy will talk about. Restrictions on practice of religion. Uh, the three evil forces. <laughs> And fundamentally, the issue of 
freedom to define one's own ethnic identity, uh, whether that's in the hands of the state or as a result of a free and open social and cultural process. Yani bunun adı medeni ve mesela milli kimlik meselesi, bunun adı hükümetinin siyasizi belgelenirken bile emriyette icra bulu vakkal. Riyallah, Riyallah. What is NED's interest in this issue? NED bu işlerin nimi için kızı kadar? It is not the national endowment for the preservation of ethnic identity. Yani milletlerinin e, e, milli kimliğini saklap kalış e, bizim işimiz hem esasını ben. It's the national endowment for democracy. Bu yani milletlerinin demokratik ya kol kol konu saklap kalış bizim e, alakı kalış ya ki biz kız kılıklarının sahi hakkı da. NED cannot support Uyghurs in East Turkestan uh, working for democracy. Uh, NED is a part of the Turkish Uyghurs' democracy. So we support groups in exile. So we support groups in exile. NED is interested in the democratization of the entire globe. NED bütün yer şarı boyunca bu şey demokrat, yer şarı da demokrat yani emel kaşırış hizmetlerini kollaydı. And democratizing the PRC is one of our top priorities. Yani Hıhtay'da demokrat yani emel kaşırış bizden en baştaki vazifemizden birisi. To get democracy in China, you need uh, all kinds of forces inside China to speak up for democracy. <coughs> Chinese, Uyghurs, Tibetans. Yani Hıhtay'da demokratiyen emel kaşırış için Hıhtay'daki bağırlık milletler şu demokratiye hakkı da pişkir katlaştırış gerek bu Uyghur ve Tibetlerden üstü kaldı. So in the short term, even though Uyghurs who are working on democracy are mostly working from exile. Gerçi bu kısıkı müddet işi de Uyghurların demokratiye kürüşü köprek çetelerdeki muhacir etti ki Uyghurlar tarafından elip erilgan basımı. As Hans Hogarth has said, Uh, in order to truly understand the, tr the human rights situation in China, the Uyghur issue uh, must be part of the international conversation. Yeah. A second uh, project that Uyghurs can do in the short term is to educate Chinese Democrats about ethnic issues and uh, concerns minority rights in China. Yani ikinci bir muhim vazife Uygurlar kılalaydığın kısık müddet işi de Hıhtaylı ağa mı şu milli mesele, etnik mesele ve şu dini erkeli katalık meselelerini Uygurlar Hıhtaylı düşündürelaydı. And because democracy is fundamentally a, a point about self-governance, those who are governed have to have a voice in their own government, so Uyghurs need to have a voice in the conversation about their own future. Çünkü demokratiye de geldik, bunu dağış etkanda öz özünü başkuruş de geldik. Öz özünü başkuruş de geldik bu olgun için Uyghurlarmış, devlet başkuruş, katarlıkmış meselelerde özlerinin pişkir alına katlaştıra alışı ve özlerinin avazını yükselte alışı. So those in exile could be a voice for the voiceless at home. Şunda bu olgun da muhacir ettikle vatan işi de avaz çıkmak Allah'ın avazı bol alaydı. Is there a Uyghur saying that encapsulates that, that idea? Yeah, the Uyghurca da bu sözünü ispat edilen söz var mıydı? Yani just voice for voiceless. Avazsızlığının avazı. In the long term, NED hopes that exiled Uyghur groups can help prevent future conflict uh, if there is a freer political society in the PRC. Uzun müddette bu çeteldeki muhacir ettiki Uyghurla eğer Hıhtay'da demokratiye emel kaşıdığın küllerine bir sikke gende şu ya da peyda boğusu milli tokunuşlarının aldığını ilişkiden ayıtı muhim rol oynayalaydı. People in exile also have to think as Carl suggested about future constitutional arrangements. Yani mışı muhacirettiki Uyghurla kelgüsüdeki mışı yeni şekillendisi Hıhtay'daki meselen deyli asas kanununun şekilliniş ceryandı mı üzüman fikirini katlaştıralaydı rol oynayalaydı. Probably nobody living in East Turkestan and living in China wants to say, okay, I, uh, we agree that these 100 people can come and give us a new constitution. Yani belki de Mışıhtay'nın işçilikle herkes uh, tamam mışı sırt tıkkı gibi sırtın bir bir ayız edem kilip bizki yeni bir uh, asas kanun teyarlat versin diye işin hatayın. But while in, groups are in exile, they can certainly 
have the freedom, academic freedom and freedom of speech to learn more about the alternatives and to provide some uh, potential models and uh, study materials for people back home in the future when they do have a free choice. Bırak mı şu muhacirat ki yaşamakta mesela uygurlar, çetelerde bazı materyallarla tatbikat, nimelerle tekme köp imkaniyetler boğun için bula ula veten işçiliklerinin bu şu asas kanunlu şekillendiriş ve bazı siyasetlerinin dikişte nurgun kıymetlik e, e, fikirler bilen, materyallar bilen bula yardım kılalıydı. NED also hopes that Uyghur groups in exile can simply gain practical experience with democratic decision making. Onun başka mesela Anedi'nin yeni bir arzusu, mesela ki muhacirat ki Uygurlar mesela, ve demokratik hakimiyetine kanda başvuruş, tüzümlerine kanda demokratik şekilde e, kontrol muşu Katarlık cihetlerde nihayet kıymetli tecrübeler bilen veten işçilik karındaşlarına yardım kılalıydı. Yeah, the self-governance and the elections uh, and so on of the World Uyghur Congress, the UAA and so on. Mesela öz, özün özü başkuruş veya sayılan elip veriş katarlık işleri hazır mesela Uyghur kurultiyi ve Uyghur Amerika Cemiyeti kıkandık. Muşun meselelerde vatan işlik karınlaştırıcı çok yardım kalalıydı. And the Canadian Uyghur Association. Kanada'daki Uyghur Cemiyeti'n var yine. Uh, to give you a sense of NED's commitment to supporting Uyghur democracy efforts, um, you can just translate the, uh, the statistics there. Mesela Enedi'nin mesela Uygurla hakkında bir vakka yardımların düşündürüşü mayadık ki ma kesef kişinin davatıdır. Mesela Uygurla hıhtayçilik umumun oposunun bir pütten onda eşik percentini teşkil kıldı dedi. Ama Uygur mesela programması bizden hıhtayga bergen umumun sonma işçi de bizden Uygurla bergen sonumuz 13 percentini teşkil kıldı dedi. Gerçi Uygurla'nın oposu bir pütten onda eşik percent git oraya sonu hıhtayla. Ama bizim Uyghur lavşın acırat kampanımız, umumi hıhtay acırat kampanımızın 13%'ın doğru geldiydi. Tibetler mi aran 13% alalaydı dedi. Mesela Mongolya aran 7%. 0.7, this one Mongolya. Nölpüten onda yeah. 7% biz Mongolya'ya yiberimiz. Yani Uyghur lavşın acırat kampanımızın Tibetler mi okşaştığında. So, Southern Mongolia, Uvul Mongolia. Yeah, yeah, we say Mongolia. Canobe, içki Mongolia. Inner, China Inner says Mongolia. the name Mongolia. Ha, ha, ne Mongolia. Ne Mongolia. Mongolia. Mongolia. Uh, just to be very clear, those who have heard my presentations before have seen this very clear point. Uh, NED supports groups that work to create democratic systems in their homelands. It does not say anything about sovereignty, independence, or no independence. NED. <laughs> Yani Mışın'da Uyghurlar koşuş, Mışın milletlerinin özüne özü başkuruş, bir demokratiyeni berpa kılış, Mışlığa e, yardım kıldı. Lekin bir yerde müstakillik ve digendek bu nesilerine aşkarı kollamaydı. So all we care about is democracy. Biz fakat demokratiye bile işimiz var, şunu kollayımız. We don't care about the rest. Biz unudun başkası, biz onun e, kollaşı dairimiz kırmaydı. In common with uh, NED's programs all around the world, we try to cover a uh, number of different program areas that are all necessary for democracy, and Mehmet will translate these mm -hmm. five for you. NED's program is that we have to do the same thing in the world, and we have to do the same thing in the world, and we have to do the same thing in Karaşlani, onu neşir kılış ve tarkıtış konferans digen kokşaş. Kişilik hukuk, bunu kişilik hukuk ne meselen onu hüccetleştiriş ve onu himaye kılış. Ona dinkin, bu şu ammüvi e, muharip deydik, halk ammüsünü terbiyeleş. Ona dinkin, e, tokunuşla adın oldun imiş. Ya ki tokunuşlarını bir taraf kılış katarlık, bu şu türlü bu işe biz plajırtımız. So right now we support four Uyghur groups. Hazır biz Türk Uyghur grupsini iktisadi cihetten yardım bilen tanımlarız. The first was UAA with the Uyghur Human Rights Project. Birincisi Uyghur Amerika Cemiyeti ve Uyghur Kişilik Hukuk Programı. Anı Dünya Uyghur Kurultiyi. Bunu Dünya Uyghur Kurultiyi'nin demokratiye bir şey rehberlerini terbiyeleş meşguldürüş kursi. Anı dinkin Uyghur Kişilik Hukuk ve Demokratiye Fondi Cemiyeti. Bunu da Ayalla'nın hak hukuk meselesi ve Ayalani Demokratiye Boş Terbiyeleş Programı'sı 
Onun dedi halkara uygur kalem keşler cemiyeti, onun dedi uygurlarının bu pişkere erkilliği ve kişilik hukukunu imaya kılış katarlık cihetlerdi ki mekbuat erkilliğin nuşulanı biz imaya kılıp kul bilen yerden kuatlı. And we welcome uh, all proposals from any organization that has a democracy building idea and you would like to request any D uh, grant. You're very welcome to submit those proposals to me. Unfortunately, it can't be in Uyghur, it has to be in English. Uh, I think when you look at the following slides, you will have a sense of optimism that both Hans Hogerfer and Carl Gershman uh, talked about this morning that it's important to uh, never give up. Okay. Marino, mm -hmm. Dolkanisa, we mm -hmm. miss you, Dolkan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is two years ago. Excuse me, Baron. Program is over. Let's see their friends. Mm -hmm. Do you see yeah. yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> In the EU Parliament. Europa, Europa Parliament is about to be Avrupa Parlamentindeki Uygur rahberlerini terbiyeler için kursu. Bu mu Avrupa Parlamentinde? Bu ne Uygur kuruldu? Brüksel'deki ama şu Ammi Teşkilat rahberleri bilen Dünya Uygur kuruldu'nun tağın faaliyetleri. Halkara Uygur Kişilik Okok ve Demokratiye Fondi Cemiyeti. This is a conference held yeah. here in this room two years ago for <laughs> women. And this, if you can read the translate this. Dünyadaki bütün yazgıçılar, yazgıçılarının bu şu yazgıçılar ve ziyalila oturduğu emkarlıkını, dostluğunu küçük etmişten kurulgan bir cemiyetken bu. Bu cemiyetin asaslık maksidi bütün dünyadaki yazgıçılarının ne adı buluştuğun katı nezer, öz fikirlerini erken e, işbadı kılış ve sunuş. Bütün bu şu dünyadaki bu şu edebiyat sahası da bu şu fikir erkenliğini tergip kılış için kurulgan bu şu halkara yaz, kalem keşler cemiyetiyken. And I, I believe, especially for those of you who live in Turkey, the Pen Club is uh, planning to put together a meeting of several Turkic-speaking Pen Clubs to talk about freedom of expression for all writers in all the Turkic-speaking countries. In Turkey, the Yashikallah Belkin Khaber Top Council, Azar Turkey, the Mushu Kalem Kashla Jamit Tarpetan Urlash Turlwatan. Türkçe sözleydiğen milletlerinin yazgıçılarını bir yer ekilip fikir almıştırdığın şunlar bir layihaya için işler vatanıydı. So for those interested, please do be in touch with Pen Club. Eğer bunun kızık Allah'a bulsa ama şu yazgıçılar kulubu da bir kulub var, şunu ola ala kılınla deydi. And that, there are some members. E bu, bu şu uygur kalem keşle cemiyetin olayız. Ezanları deydi. I'm going to skip through that. And so I, I leave you with, uh, let's do it for the children. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation, excellent job.
try to ch deal with the computer and then I'll come back. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Okay, I have to um, it's mostly just stuff in the back. Mm -hmm. So the stuff that's in here I probably won't show. And I need to see you a little bit more. Um, this is what I hope to say when I talk about this and don't say it out loud. Okay. Um, yep. okay, I'll turn the floor over to Kara Ingridson. Okay, so I should have just spent a talk. Just finish it and then oh, do the whole thing. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, how's great? Can everyone hear me? Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to divide my remarks into three parts. First, I'm going to give a brief overview of the framework for religion uh, in China, broadly speaking, and then specifically in Xinjiang. Then, in the second part of my remarks, I'll talk about how state policy um, has affected Uyghurs of freedom, Uyghurs' freedom of religion. Uh, especially after 9-11. Uh, finally, I'll end with some recommendations um, and some thoughts and observations on, and questions on strategies for action. Uh, first, China's framework for religion. As I think everyone here well knows, the Chinese government strictly controls religious practice and represses religious activity outside Constitution and related laws and um, regulations protect freedom of religious belief, but they limit the way that people can express their belief by limiting this to normal religious activities, which is a vaguely defined term. Um, in addition, the space for religious activity is further narrowed because only five groups are recognized, and Islam is one of the recognized religions. But, of course, as a recognized group, it must, religious communities must register with the government, and they are subject to the control of the patriotic religious associations, which are communist party-formed organizations that basically serve as a state mouthpiece. So for Muslims in China, this is the Islamic Association of China, which leads the interpretation of texts and trains personnel, but all in accordance with state policy. Um, Okay, or I, I have three parts if, I, if you want to do it after each okay. chunk. Um, so I'll maybe finish this and, and turn it over to you. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay, great. Um, so Chinese regulations do provide some limited protections for religious activity. Um, regulations allow for religious communities whoops, to um, establish sites of worship, uh, print materials, engage in social welfare t activities, but this is all contingent upon government oversight and approval. Um, in addition, Chinese laws do provide some procedural protections for religious groups um, and some remedies against abuses by government officials. Um, but on the whole, we see a legal framework, uh, legal and policy framework for religion that is fundamentally restrictive. Right? The focus is on restraining and controlling religion rather than broadly protecting every Chinese citizen's freedom of religion. Okay, but that's the official framework on in, on paper, that's what the you know that's what the laws say. What's going on in practice? Um, first, we do see some space for religious activity in China, both inside official parameters and outside. Um, gaps between law and practice, where or ambiguities in law, where the law itself is bad, can have positive outcomes. So, some unregistered, unrecognized religious communities have been able to operate in China, sometimes with the support of local officials. Parents in some areas, including in some Muslim communities outside Xinjiang, have, been, have had leeway to give children religious education. I don't want to minimize the instances of repression we do see, um, but in many parts of China there is some space to maneuver. Um, second, as China builds a growing body of laws, including laws that are not bad, you know, laws that allow people to sue the government, laws that can actually protect people's rights, and as rule of law consciousness grows um, across China, some religious communities have had success in using good provisions of the law to challenge government abuses. Okay, just not the gray stuff. Ben sözümle üç bölümde başla bölüp son emendeydi. Birisi, başı hükümetin, başı dinli kontrolü kılıçtaki siyasi ve bunun ramkları. 
Ani bu neymiş devlet işçi ve bulup mu? Mesela Uyghur Abdunum orayında dinli kontrol kılış için kandak siyasetlerini çıkartalık hakkında. Anan deyken mesela hükümetin siyasetinin Uyghurlarına kandak, Uyghurlarına dini erkeli kandak təsir kılığı bulup mu? 11 misil dəbir deyken. En ahir de, mən bazı özümünün köz karışlarım bu ki, bazı tavsiyelerimini oturup koymak ki, kandak strategiye ve kandak hareketlerini kolunu şakırı deydi. Bunun sözlüğün sözlüğün birinci maddesi Xtaydaki dini erkillik Toğrısıdaki kanuni siyaset kanuni siyasetler ve bulup mu Uyghur Abdurrahim'deki bu kanunların icra buluşu evvel hakkı toxtaldı. Xtaydaki bu dini erkillik hakkıdaki kanuni siyaset ramkisi işçi de hazır Xtaydaki bu bulup mu hükümet kontrolü təstiklamağın Dini faaliyetler gibi ilip bağın e, kısıtlaş ve çekleş erkeğinin bağın sonra iğırlaş vatkallığını davetidir. Anan deyken, Xtay'nın asas kanunda ve münasibet kanunlarda ve kanun belgelerinde de gerçi dini erkeğinlik hakkında bazı bir kogdaş tutuyor. Dini erkeğinlikini kogdaş hakkında bazı belgelerinde bozumu. Lekin bu emeliyatta, emeliyat icra kılış yarayanında mühendisi çeklenirken. Gerçi kanun normal dini hareketlerini koğdaydı değil de inip oturup uyan basımı. Lekin kandak hareketlerinin kanunluk dini hareket, kandakların emeslik hakkı da inip bir hüküm oturup uyan basımı. Anan deyken bunun koşulu, Xtay'daki bir dini hareketlik meselesinin bağın sırı e, tar ram keşçi de e, ilip verilip atkallığını. E, gerçi Xtay aşkarı halde, müşü beş dinli, Aşkarı mı şu devlet tarafından e, itiraf olunan din de gösterken bu sunu, onun için de İslamiyet mi var? Lakin bu beş dinin hepsi emlakta din dini itikat meselesi gelende hükümetten tizimli işini talep diyorlarlığı, tizimli tılmagan e, dini faaliyetlerinin kanunsuz da karalıgalığı. Ana dinkim bu dini erkeklerine tizimli edilen devlet organlarının bu şu vatan perverlik dini e, cemiyeti diyende. Boşundak cemiyetle astı da, mesela Uyghur Abdurrahim'de olsa, Şincan dini cemiyeti de gendek, boşulağı tızım ve şart koşkallığı. Şundak bu oğan da, o hükümetinin siyasetlerini emeliyette icra kılıç çeriyen de, e, nait oturdu parklarının bu oğallığını. Yani bir taraftan, Xtay'nın bazı işgir ülkeleri de dini erkeklikini icra kılıç, dini itikatini icra kılıç çeriyen de, bazı bir boşlukla biraz kenarak bozu mu? Yani bazı rayla karakalı biraz kenarak bozu mu? Lekin Uyghur Abdurrahim'de bu e, dini erkeklik, dini itka, dini materiallarını besiş, her xil ictimai e, paravallık hakkında dini e, hizmetlerini elip bir şıkatarlık cihetlerden neydi? İğir toskullukla bulu vatkallığını. Bu toskullukla jıllı adım bu yan, oturu koyulup gelgen basımı hükümetinin bunu yakşılaş için eşkanlar küçük kamalı vatkallığını, bağın sıra bulanı bastırı vatkallığını. Ana dinkin bunu bastırışta mı şu hükümet özünün dini e, siyasetlerinin dairesini tekimi e, çekilip, bağın sıra taraytıp, her hıl namla bilen mı şu insanların dini hakkın korkunu koğdaş ve olanı garanti astığı eleştirin e, nait uzak aldı, bastırış şerketleri tekimi evce ağırlığına davatıdı. Azır, Xtay'nın aşkara oturup uygan mı şu e, dini erkeklikleri e, toğırlıq, birisi, Xtay'nın işi de ve sırtı da bu dini erkeklik e, faaliyetleri hakkında Xtay'nın elip deyken teşvikatının bir de emesliğini bu hakkında nait boşluklarına bağlıgını. İkinci de oturup oyan kanun bilen bu kanunun icra kılış e, doğrusu da mı boşluklarına bağlıgını müşlanı sözlerdi. Great, now I'm going to talk very briefly about the framework inside Xinjiang. Um, so how does the general framework for religion in China compare to what we see inside of Xinjiang? So three points I want to make. Uh, first, inside Xinjiang, the formal framework for regulating religion is harsher than it is elsewhere in China. Um, now, in one sense, it does follow the, na the, the national model. Um, you know, although Xinjiang is a name in autonomous region, um, the autonomy system does not provide for any special system of uh, religious regulation. So, like, so in accordance with the national model, whether it's in Xinjiang or Tibet or elsewhere, religious groups must register with the government, um, as must uh, mosques, etc., and the local state-controlled Islamic association uh, is in charge. At the same time, the formal framework inside Xinjiang 
is, has features which are harsher than what we see in, at the national framework in many respects. Um, first, some formal legal provisions themselves are harsher than what we see in national law. And second, laws are bolstered by a whole host of internal and public um, directives, campaigns, handbooks aimed at further tightening the space for religious practice. Now, how do these laws and directives play out in practice? Uh, well, that's my second point. So the space for religious practice that we see in parts of China elsewhere, including uh, space outside of state controlled parameters, is greatly restricted in practice uh, for Muslims in Xinjiang. So in practice, Xinjiang authorities have been fairly effective in taking laws on the books, things written in paper, and putting them, you know, actually carrying them out. Um, so there may be some ways to engage in religious activities outside of official parameters, but Xinjiang authorities are determined to snuff these activities out. And so, and then my third and, and last point for this section is, I think as a result of this, we've seen basically no evidence of people inside Xinjiang being able to use good provisions in the law to um, defend their rights, the way that we have seen some efforts outside of Xinjiang. Um, okay, I think I'll stop there. And, and uh, just to, to actually add one more thing, and the reason why we haven't seen that is, as I'll discuss in the moment, you know, religion is so politicized and the campaign against stability is, is, is so strong that I think there just isn't that opportunity to try to even launch a rights defense movement. Uh, ma işkence kısmı hem de bu şu Şinca Uygur Abdurrahim'deki dini siyasetle yani şu siyasetlerin oran kısaklığına toplu bakalım. Ee, bu hakkı toktalığında e, üç e, noktanı alaydı takipleyemen deydi. Birisi bu Şinca Uygur Abdurrahim'de bu şu dini e, itikadını çekleş e, siyaseti e, Hıhtay'ın o başkara ayları karaganda naitli katlık geldiğini e, yani birisi Xtaynın bir devlet siyasi şekilde de başka yerlerde icra kılıbakan bir milli model orundaki dini siyasının mesela Uygur Abdurrahim'de asasen nayt az miktarda icra kılınalığını ya da nayt katık çekilmemi gibi uçura bakkalığını gerçi Xtaynın asas kanında mesela milli teritoriyelik Abdullah'ın rayullağı nispeten Dini siyasetle biraz kenri yizilişi kanun bu içe. Şundak yizilgan bozu mu? Lekin yerlik emeldağla ve Xtayna mışı Abdurrahim'deki emeldağlarının bu siyasetin icra kılıç yeryanında o kitapta yizilgan kanunu bir tara karıp koyup özüleri ayırın bir dini siyaset çıkarıp şunu icra kılıp kalıgını bu icra kılıçta mışı meçtilerini tızımlatıştın bozu ana denkin mışı yerlik emeldağlarının dini Jigalishlani control kolish bosun hem nesi başka türlü icra bolvat kalgan sözler vardı. Yani birse, mesela Uygur Abdurrahim'deki dini siyasetlerin nayt katta kalde icra kol başka raylar nispeten nayt katta icra kolvat kalganın yani bir terpi deydi. Kanun icra kılıçta kanun ko buzgunçla kılıçtaydı. Şu kanun icra kılmasın, kanun ko buzgunçla kılıvat kalıgıdaydı. Gerçi bu azır icra bulvatkan siyasetle, hatayın özünün kanunu ka karşı özünün kanunu buzgunçla karakterde basımı, bunun geç kandak bara karşılıklı bir bomba kalıgıdaydı. Anan dinkin, muşu hükümet emel dağlarının gerçi kanunda dini erkilik cehetim belgelik az basımı biraz boşluk basımı onu icra kıldığında, lakin yerlik siyaset Mesela tevhid güçlülüğün hücretle her hal ilperlgan kampanyala ana diğin teşvikat materyalleri materyalleri muşu katarlıklarının hepsi bu dinli çekleşçi nayetik şüllük tesirçen rol oynamak kalıgana dedi. Ana diğin muşu hükümetlerin muşu kanundan başka yerliklerin ilperlatkan muş siyasetlerinin uygulana dini etkadağa kandak tesir kılavat kalıgı menen işkence noktam dedi. Hazır dedi, hemimiz şunu bilimiz, Şinjan Uyghur Abdurrahim'deki Müslümanlığının dini erkirliği nâit İğralı'da çekilme vakkallığı nâit inak dedi, gerçi kanunga hılap bozunu. Bunun deki birden bir sebep, yerliklerinin bu siyasetini, kanunun sırtı deki bu siyasetlerini icra kılıçta nâit katkul ve nâit küşlük bizim bilen elipleri vakkallığı dedi. Şunda bugün için müşe hükümetin siyasetinin sırtı da insanların dini erkilikini, dini itikadını 
yürütüş için ne de az boşluk boğam bolsun o hazır insanların şahsi turmuşuğa tacavuz kılıç bahasıga o boşluklarını hükümet futkolunu burnunu sokup insanların şahsiyetine ailevi turmuşuğa təsir kılıç isavga mı dinle dini itikatlarını çekil avatkalığındaydı. Ana dinkin yani en ahır konuqta hazır gıçı Müşün'e katkı siyasetler boğam basın mı? Dikin halkının kanun aldaki hukukunu himaye kılıçta işkandak bir e, erkilliğinin bulmağallığını. Çünkü hükümetinin e, ilip bir vatka yerliklerinin siyaseti gerçi kanun ve kılap basın mı? Dikin hükümetini başkara vatkan çoğun emel dağlarının kolluşu asıda ilip bir vatkallığını. Çoğun aşkı halklarının amalsız kılı vatkallığını. Um, I'm going to deviate a bit from and, and shorten, so I'm going to have to ask you to please just... Uh, for the next portion, try to translate what I say, but okay. it's not going to follow okay. this. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to, to shorten my uh, second portion of my remarks so we can get ahead to uh, the recommendations. Um, so briefly, what I'm going to talk about right now in the second portion is sort of how state policy has affected Uyghurs' freedom of religion post 9-11. And again, I'm going to shorten this from what I had planned to say, but very briefly, um, I think September, the September 11th attacks um, and subsequent counterterrorism campaigns that we saw across the globe gave the Chinese government uh, more force on the international arena uh, to exploit its claims as religion of, excuse me, exploit its claims of religion as a threat to the region's stability. Um, certainly well before 9-11 we saw the government associate illegal religious activities with a threat to stability, but 9-11 I think really gave a push to increase this momentum. So and as a result of that I think we saw uh, as many speakers have already said, more support for China's claims of the existence of a Muslim terrorist threat to its borders. And this has had real impact for Uyghurs inside and outside China. Um, okay, first, the impact for Uyghurs inside China. Um, I, I'm not going to, you know, it, it's an increased repression in the region. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the examples. I think. Everyone here in the room knows the extent to which we've seen you know, serious violations. Um, and so that's, you know, obviously had an impact inside China. But I think what is also interesting is that as a result of the climate after 9-11, we saw a more difficult environment for everyone here, for Uyghurs outside China who want to promote uh, their cause. Uh, Müşü halkara terörüz karşı uruşunun Uyghurlanın dini erkeliğini Xtay tarafıdan Boğuşu boğan təsir akırı sözləb gelip Müşü 11. sintabrını Xtay hükümetini Öyük Xtay hükümeti için Nayta altın bir fırsat təminlət bəygəliğini Və Xtay hükümetinin müşü 11. sintabr Dinkin ki Oturuk çıkan halkaralıq terörüzüm karşı uruş Digendim faydalanıp Uyghurlanın dini erkeliğini Xalıqancı dəfsəndi kılvatkalıqı Və müşü halkara kampanyanı Üzünün mənpəyatı işlilik vatkallığı ne? Ve dinli, bu Xitay hükümet, din Xitay hükümet tarafıdan milletinin, devletinin e, bir xatlarlığına təhdid de karalıqallığı ne? Şunlaşka, müşü Xalqarada, müşü Xitaylanın, müşü dini erkeliklerini bastırış nisbeten bazı bir tankıtları boğam basını. Lekin Xitaylanın, müşü 11. sintabr deyken o tankıtlarının kulak asmasın, müşü Uyğurlanın dini erkeliklerini biz şartı, her birden ziyade bol vatkallığını sözlet geldi. Ve şunlaşka 11. sintabr deyken yalğız Vatanışlık Uyghurlarının köplerinin ve dini erkeklik cihazda emanla bilgendik. Bağın sonra kıyın avalığa düştüğü vatkanlarını sundu. Okay, and you mentioned for Uyghurs outside China. Evet. So, okay, let's start. Okay, um, finally the final part of my, um, of my remarks, and I know time is short, uh, recommendations and questions and observations and strategies for, for uh, action. Uh, first, the commission, the Congressional Executive Commission on China, has made recommendations each year in its annual report to the Chinese government. I'll quickly uh, mention a few here. Um, you can see the, the full recommendations in our report. But uh, briefly, support legislation. These are recommendations to the US government. Support legislation uh, to draw attention to human rights issues in Xinjiang. Um, raise concerns about the issue to Chinese officials. Uh, third, urge officials to, um, excuse me, um, urge officials to take steps to ad address problems in the Xinjiang judicial system. That's one issue that we've dealt with quite a bit in our report. And fourth, support funding for non-governmental organizations that address human rights issues. Um, now I would like to turn, um, in the remaining time left, to some questions, observations, um, 
to the World Uyghur Congress, because that's why we're all here. Um, so, and am I doing, how am I doing? Okay, okay, great. So I think this is the, maybe the most interesting or less boring part of my remarks. So uh, first, turning specifically on religion, um, I think it's going to be hard to take concrete steps here and now to improve conditions for religious freedom in China, uh, excuse me, for religious freedom in Xinjiang. But there are a number of strategies that I think could eventually help bring improvements. First, just drawing more attention to Uyghur human rights abuses, including repression of religion. More attention can bring more support, that can bring more funding, and that's, those are all good things. Um, so options include engaging with rule of law or educational programs here in the US or Europe. Uh, these programs could open new doors to training, um, to training programs that can help empower people inside Xinjiang. Um, maybe another option could be engaging with religious communities outside China, both Muslim and other communities, um, to find new bases of support. So a lot of religious communities here in the U.S. have human rights initiatives. If they took up Uyghur issues, that could be a, a step forward. Um, and then another issue to think about is the extent to which linking Uyghur human rights issues up to broader Chinese human rights movements will help the Uyghur cause. Are there sympathetic voices among rights defenders in China? Um, there might not be people willing to work in the sensitive area of religious freedom, but maybe there are people who would work on employment discrimination. Um, well, certainly there are pluses and minuses to uh, working with kind of the broader China human rights movement, but I think Uyghur issues are often marginalized or overlooked in the broader China human rights uh, or rule of law movements, and I don't think that's fair. This is an issue that is just as deserving and as worthy uh, of being a front and center issue. Um, second brief point, um, so definitions of what the Uyghur movement wants. Um, I know the World Uyghur Movement has a broad statement of its aims, but how specifically will it reach these aims? If one immediate aim is to press the Chinese government to give Uyghurs genuine autonomy, how will this autonomy be defined? How can religious freedom, along with other rights, be concretely realized? Is what is asking for what's already written in law a good strategy if the law is problematic, or is that a pragmatic first step? Um, third, touching on the issue of Uyghurs' identity as Muslims. Now, I think 9-11 created a climate that makes it more difficult to be a Muslim human rights uh, organization, unfortunately. Um, and so, you know, how does the Uyghur movement navigate this unfortunate reality that there's a lot of suspicion towards Muslim groups? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so is it a practical strategy? And these are just questions. Is it practical for the Uyghur movement to present Uyghurs as moderate Muslims because that sends a signal to certain policy makers? Um, or on the flip side of this, is using language like moderate Muslims, instead of just calling the Uyghur Muslims, does such language you know, ultimately feed into broader stereotypes about Islam, which could come around later to hurt the Uyghur movement? Uh, does language like moderate Islam or moderate Muslims succumb to the Chinese government framework of categorizing Muslims based on their perceived level of extremism? And finally, I'm going to just make one more point about something I feel very strongly about. Um, as important as it is to draw attention to Uyghur culture, um, I think it can also be extremely helpful to draw more attention to, excuse me, what did I just say, Uyghur culture? I meant to say, aha, I was ahead of myself. So what I meant to say was, as important as it is to draw attention to Uyghur human rights issues, of course that's of paramount of importance, the more attention that we can also draw, that you can also draw to Uyghur culture, the better. Um, you know, Uyghurs have a great history, great music, rich dance and literature traditions that few people know about. So, you know, this can ultimately draw in more support and more understanding about who the Uyghurs are. Um, and this is also important as controls in China, China increase. We need to, you know, I think everyone needs to think about ways to protect uh, Uyghur culture and diaspora, both for yourselves and your, your children, but so the rest of us can enjoy it too. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Yalgız özümüzün tavsiyelerini hükümet gibi bildirimle kamastım. Bu materyallerini takıtımız ve halkarada müşakkada kollaşını, himayeni kol kentiriş için mi? Faaliyet ilk bağdık dedi. Bunun için bir de yani hükümet gibi sunan bizden tekliflerimiz için de. Kongres'te çıkartan mesela bu dini erkeklik hakkındaki kanun layıları var. Bunu hükümetin tekrarı aktifçalık olan icra kılışını ona söyleş. Ve Kongres'nin imam kim olsa Amerika Devlet Meclisi'nin müşakkada tekrarı köprek kanun layılarına makullaş. Anan deyin ki, Xtaydi ki, məşhur adliyə sistemisini ıslah qılış haqqında mı, Kongresinin təxmin aktib təhb qoşşi, şuarqılıq, məşhur asas qanunda xtaydi qanunlarda bəlgələngən dini ərkilliklərinin, həqqiq qoqlarının kapalət qib qılış üçün xtaydi yana müstəqil bir adliyə sistemisini bərpa qılış üçün hükumət və Kongresinin onun qıb isim qılış üçün, məşhur ki, materiallarını mı, bizdən çıxalqan dəklatımız, jildi çıxalqan dəklatımız özü çıxaldı deydi, bunu biz bir təvsiyə süpti də verimiz deydi. Ana dinkin müşü uyğurlarının müşü diniye hukuk meselesi, erkillik meselesi kegende yalguz sile müşü biz ölenlerinin kıpkan bastığın bizge müşü uçurlarını təminle perişanla boyun biz bu uçurlarını müşü digende müşü doklatladık şiltimiz. Şunlarca şunu odun başka yene Amerika'daki ve başka dünyanın arkaç çaylarıdaki halma hıl amüvi teşkilatla vığımı müşünün anlık dışınla muyum deydi. Bazı teşkilatla vığa müşü işsizlik meselesi, anandakin işçilerine, işçiler kartılgan ayırımçılık meselesi, katarlıkla vığına etsiz sözgür teşkilatla vığa. Bulan mı müşü dini erkilik meselesiyle kızı kıdıq da hükümetin o müşü defsen dışılıkını eğitleşke silahge tenkeş bol alaydı deydi. Hem de ikinci taraftan bu çeteldeki Uyghurların, Silahik Okşaş Milletlerinin vatanla içindeki dini erkillikini kolga kelturuş ve ıslah kılış hakkında kançılık küçük kralışınla bu biraz onu bir nesli deyiş tez. Lekin silahının hiç olmasa bu çeteldeki Uyghurların bir stratejiye oturup koyduğun iş, kandak stratejiyelerini kullanımız, kandak kılıp şu yerdeki vaziyetlerini yakışlaşık oldu. Degendek bir stratejiye bekçişte çok nimanla buludu. Mesela bu stratejiyenin birisi tıkımı küp cemaatinin dikkatini müşü vatanlardaki uyğurlarını dini erkeliliği, harunlu vatan dini erkeliliği taat için erkek kılışınla gerek. Kançı köp dikkat şunun da taatılsa, şunçı köp yardım kolu gelirdi, şunçı köp yardım digerlik, şunçı onun gaylıkı iktisad icatın fondın yardım kıldağın teşkilatla mı köpüydü, şu arkalık silahının kolanla tıkımı küçüydü öyleydi. Yeni birisi müşü vatan sırtı dikilerinin ulanı tərbiyeləş və ulanı küşləndiriş, ulanın avazının təxəmi küşlük çıxıdığın alıqı kəltiriş üçün ulanı tərbiyeləş mühim. Yəni bir cəhətdən, deydi, müşü uyğur məsələsini, uyğur dini ərkilik məsələsini qandaq yaxşı aldı bütün dünyadaki insanların dikkatliyə təqdim qılış məsələsi mühim deydi. Bunu da silahının müşü uyğur musumalları digən hüqumlu qandaq bir məsələsini, Nəm qınmaq ki, qandaq bir tərifləyisələ, müşünün qımı inik nəm qılışınla kərək. Çünki 11-ci sintəbirdən ki, əbsus ki, müsuman deyənlik bəzi insanların nəzirdə bir negatif, yəni ki, səlbi hüqum peydə qıldıqan buldu. Yalqız bulamaməz, müşü ərkillik məsələsidir. Nəzarə ərkillik nəmə? Hazır silahını tələb qıldıqınınla, Xıqtayının qanunda yazılıqan, təyyə boğan nəsini tələb qılış, Mu ya ki başka mı? Menin şu boğanda kanun da hazır yazılgan. Yani kanun da bana eslen talep kutturup şu noktadan iş başlayacak mı? Yakışır hep karaymandaydı. Onu adam başka fikir erkilliği, anladın ki muşu dini hukuku katarlık mesela mı? Hem de yani kanun da yazılgan. Anladın ki muşu Müslüman kimlik falan oturup çıkışının tesliğini sözler gelip hazır muşu Müslüman diye de halma hal Müslüm Allah ve özangla nesle biz. Yəni, moduriyyət müsulman dəb qaramsılar, zamanıvi məndək ılğar bir müsulman dəb qaramsılar, uyğur müsulmanları dəb qaramsılar, ya müsulmanlar dəb qaramsılar. Müşakkadımı bir fikirlərini oturuq çıxışı, nurğun başqa xalqıra orqanlarını və millətlərini, üzanlarının davarınlağı cəlb qılış üçün mühim rol oynaq edəkdir. Yəni, birisi uyğurların silahının ayıta pəvq ıladdə yaxş tarixinlə və mədəniyyətinlə və Özanlarının müzikilerinle müşünü kançılık eden buludu. Müşülerinin hemmini bir tutaş aldı oturup koyduğunda, özanlarının tonuştu olanda, insanlar silahının kançılık bir zamanı bir ılgar müslüman işgelliği olanı tonuşuğa esnada da tarihinle ve müzike müşü enenevi medeniyetinle köp yakışı təsir kılalaydı. Şuna bu olan dikim başkalarının təsirdeki selbi çüşencilerinin müşarkılık yenip çıkılı buldu deydi. Müşüle asasen sözde gelir müşüle buldu.
Thank you, Kara. Uh, I'll turn the floor over now to Amy Rieger, the principal researcher for the Uyghur Human Rights Project. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm really honored to speak in front of you today, and it's a pleasure to see so many Uyghur faces. Um, even though I work at the Uyghur Human Rights Project, um, it's really a rare opportunity to be among so many Uyghurs. Um, I want to talk today about the Uyghur experience in terms of the systematic destruction of Uyghurs' religious and cultural identity. And, of course, it's really difficult to address this topic in a comprehensive way in such a short time, but I want to kind of give an introduction. Um, what, much of what I'm going to say has already been said today, and um, much of it you all are very familiar with, more so than I am. Uh, but I don't think that it will hurt to say it again and to reiterate it. Um, and I also want to thank uh, my colleague Henry um, for his scholarship, which I have drawn upon um, for much of my presentation. Um, the lack of religious freedom for the Uyghur people is today tighter than it has ever been, and it is one of the many aspects of a campaign to suppress the Uyghur identity and culture in East Turkestan. Today, the Chinese government is attempting to stamp out the Uyghur identity through mass in-migration of ethnic Han Chinese people, the transfer of young Uyghur women to work in eastern China, the removal of Uyghur as a language of instruction in schools, the destruction of Uyghur cultural heritage, including the destruction of Kashgar's old city, and the arrest and detention of Uyghurs who transmit peaceful religious and cultural messages that are at odds with official policy. Religion lies at the heart of Uyghurs' identity and culture, although it is not a conservative form of Islam, and attacking it strikes at the heart of Uyghur culture. There is a belief on the part of the Chinese government of officials um, that Uyghur culture cannot be diluted unless religious beliefs of Uyghurs are suppressed. I will argue that the Chinese government is carrying out nothing less than systematic cultural destruction uh, among the Uyghur population. Anything that involves Uyghurs' cultural identity is targeted because the government views it as a political threat. A recent quote from Nicholas Speculin from Human Rights Watch says it all. Culture is the battlefront of national security for the country, he said. And he went on to say they are destroying the whole cultural heritage. In addition to religious freedom, I'd like to discuss three other areas that are being targeted and talk about how the Uyghur experience in terms of the loss of cultural and linguistic <laughs> heritage and labor rights is unique. The repression of these rights is different from the situation of others in the PRC even though it also parallels the experience of Han Chinese throughout China. I want to address the familiar refrain heard by Uyghur activists that what is happening to Uyghurs is exactly the same as what is happening throughout the PRC. My colleagues and I encounter a constant theme uh, repeated by academics, journalists, and even other human rights activists that the destruction of Kashgar's old city is the same as the destruction of cultural heritage that is being experienced by Han Chinese. The exploitation of young Uyghurs in eastern factories is the same as what's experienced by young Han Chinese. The government's language policy towards Uyghurs is carried out with a benevolent motive, that the human rights situation for Uyghurs is no different from that for Han Chinese. Now there are, of course, many parallels Human rights abuses carried out throughout China are widespread and pronounced. But there is clear evidence of the existence of a broad, far-reaching campaign to dilute Uyghur culture. In addition to the areas I've mentioned above, um, there are key differences in what is happening specifically to Uyghurs because of the very fact that Uyghurs are a distinct minority population within the PRC, because of the discriminatory nature or intent of individual areas of policy, and because the overall effect of these policies is different. When viewed against a broad backdrop of abuses, it is hard to maintain the argument that Uyghur culture is not being specifically targeted. 
There is also a complete lack of and prohibition on public discourse in East Turkestan, in contrast to other areas of the PRC, save for Tibet. While some, gra excuse me, while some grassroots activism is taking hold throughout China, and Han Chinese activists are being given some room for civil rights advocacy, East Turkestan and Tibet are still recognized as untouchable or taboo areas. The Chinese activist Ai Weiwei, who has been advocating on behalf of victims of last year's earthquake in Sichuan, was interviewed recently by Time Magazine. According to the Time Magazine article, when asked whether such an office uh, as his office um, in Beijing would also look into the alleged abuses in Tibet and East Turkestan, he said that that would be suicidal. I'd also like to briefly address the conflict between modernization and tradition, prevalent throughout the world as globalization is carried out, that applies to the targeting of all areas of Uyghur's life and culture. I certainly am not saying that education, modern housing, employment opportunities, and so on are bad, but that policies are being implemented without the consultation and consent of Uyghur people as part of a broader policy to dilute Uyghur culture and that they are being implemented together with a widespread official view that Uyghur culture is backward. There is a widespread perception among Chinese government officials and scholars that Han culture is modern while Uyghur culture is backward and must be left behind. One particular quote that is representative of this view can be found in the March 2009 issue of the Canadian journal Asian Social Science. In the article, um, the author Wang Guangyap Wang Guangyao of Shihuizhou University states that minority people tend to have laggard ideas due to their former isolated life, and that assimilation by Han is more like modernization now. Do you want to do this? Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Azer Uyurlan, Dini Kat Kartlan Checklash, Balduk Gasilish Toranda, Mrs. Derge the Katpol of Kalagane, Bu Katak Siasatnan, Halnahal, Uzlix Elipralan, Halnahal, Kampa, Yukimet Campania Lerwalan, Siasat Lerwalan, Uyur Kim Ligan Bastrosh, Uyurlan, Sharka Turks Tandiki, Medani, Kim Ligan, Yokolishka Kartlan, Suzakiapada. Bugün Xitay hükümetinin, Mışı Uyğurların dini ve milli kimliğini yok kılış üçün yalğız işçikirdin Xitay köşmelerini köçürüp giliş, yan, enime, yaş Uyğur kızlarını Xitay'nın şarkı bölümlerine yetkiş ve Uyğur tülünü mektapladın sıkıp çıkırıp etiş, Uyğurların medeni miraslarını yok kılış ve şundakla Kaşgar, Kona, Şehir kuruluşunu Yok kılış katarlık mışı bir Türküm kampanya ve siyasetle delmiş Uyghurların milli ve medeni kimliğini yok kılış kartılgan bir bisim siyasetlere. Onun başka Uyghurlarını tişlik bilen özünü ikbadla vatka Uyghurlarını tutkun kılış. Hükümetin siyasetine ta Türk ile dağın bir ayağı söz kutu Uyghurlarını uzun ve dertik turmalar bilen cezalaş katarlıkla bu baskınç siyasetinin en ufçuğu çıkan şekledeydi. Şunu unutmasılığımız gerek ki, Uyghurların medeniyeti de ve Uyghurların kimliği de din intayın muhim bir rol oynaydı. Çünkü Uyghurlar öz itikatlanmış <gülüyor> Müslüman İslam dini bilen başka milletlerden alaydı parak kıladı. Şunlaşkı Hıhtay hükümeti, özlerinin Hıhtay hükümetinin resmi köz karşı boyutu, Uyghurların yok kılış için Uyghurların medeniyetini yok kılışımız gerek degen siyaset azı aşkara icra buluvatıdı. Xitay hükümetinin bu siyaseti, əməliyyatı sistematik aldı ki, Uyğurların mədəni, Uyğurların mədəni cəhətini yox qılış və Uyğurlarını asta-asta Xitay topuqa qoşu etişdən ibarət məşu bir məqsətinə çıxış qeyqan. Deydi, yəqində məşu Nikolas Beklin, kişilik hüquq nüfusluş təşkilatını, onun deyişdirmə, oxşaş közqarışını oturuq qoyaqan deydi. 
Çünkü azır Xtay'da deydi, müşü, medeniyet üstüden ilip durulguan köreş, bunların uyğurlu hakkı da Xtay'nın devlet bihatterliğinin en asaslıq e, e, merkezi siyasetini təşkil kıldı. Devatıdı, şunlaşkı Xtay uyğurlarının medeni miraslarının jürgi hesablanıgan müşü, din, millet, millet, til, qatarlıq müşü, kimliklerge ucumlu üzlüksüz ilip beri vatıdı. Onun başka ben yani Xtay hükümetinin kaysi mesela dini erkinlik meselesi de kaysi sağlığa çıkarak hücum kıyaklık hakkında ben toplup etmekçi. Çünkü bu la hemmesi Uygurların mesela til cihetteki til en enesi anadaki Uygurların engekçilik e, iş hakkı, iş hukuki, işleş hukuki katarlık sözler kildiğe nurgun temel haba. Lekin asaslık ben mesela e, dini erkinlik ve milli kimlik bu buzgunçilik uçuruşu mesela zat bilmem. Ee, şunu unutmasılığımız gerek deydi. Uyğurlarının milli kimlik yaktarı elip bir olarak Xtay hükümetinin buzgunçılık siyaseti, Xtay hükümetinin başka tereplileri de mi? Onun da paralel aldık itibarın ben siyasetle başka bir milletle de mi? Lekin bu paralelli kandaktı bazı Xtay'la etkandak bu Xtay'nın barlık hem de insanlar karatkan okşaş e, türdeki siyaseti de düşünsek bulmaydı çünkü Xtay'nın bazı milletler karatılığın e, siyasetli de çekleş boğam bilen, lekin Uyğurlağı karatılığın siyaseti bu alaydı. Uyğurlağını yok kılışını məqsəd kılığın. Yani Uyğurlağını işçikere ölkelerde yutkep, zavut fabrikaları işkisilişi, tillerini çekleşi, anadınkin Uyğurlağının adet ki yapkıp koyuqallarını uzun müddetli kesiş katarlıqlar başka yerlerde asasa uçuramaydı. Şunlaşkı bu Uyğurlağı xas hükümetinin yörgüzü vatkan buzgunçılıq siyasetlerinin bir kısmı. Ana ee, dinkin e, bu yalgız hükümetinin siyaseti bu kalmasın bu e, naite e, uygur rayındaki en e, bir bulundaki bir yazılacağı en adi fralanın üyelerici hükümetinin bu buzgunçlık siyaseti sınıf kırdı dedi bir kampanya şeklinde e, bunu dedik ama asaslık maksat şu uygurların özüge has milli medeniyetini ve özünün zeminindeki özünün ziminde esirlerden bir şekillendirgen dini, milli ve medeni kimlikini yok kılış müşünün katılığan dedi. Ee, hazır e, mesela Xtay'nın işgi örgüyle karısak bazı Xtay e, pahaliyetçileri üye bir yerlerden oturağı çıkıp bazı mesele hakkında e, cemaat arası da e, şu, bir kampanyayı başlatıp atıdı dedi. Lekin Şarkı Türkistan böyle Tibet'te bunda e, hiç kalma bir mesele hakkında cemaat erkeği kozgaş e, uylu kılım bulmaydıgan bir eş deydi. E, yakında e, yer tevirgenmiş e, Sıçan ölküsü bir yer tevirgende bu Nurgun insanla afet ki uçurağın denkin. Şu ya de ki AVV degen bir Xtay ziyalisi bir Xtay e, şundak bir e, nimikigan e, bir e, e, amvi hərkət qozgıgan ve bu amvi hərkətinin e, rəhbir sütü de Time e, jurnalda e, e, söhbet elan kılındı. Şu Tayyip'nin muhtarı soruğun bu Xtay'dan, sen bu şu erkeğinin Tibet ve Şarkı Türkistan'ı mı? Mu? Şu kenar etip nümkesan bulam da dediğinde o Xtay dediğinde ki, ben eğer bu şu kampanyalarımda Şarkı Türkistan'ı ve Tibet'teki nümkesan bu üzümlü ultravağın bir okşaş kişi oldu dediğinde. Demek ki Xtay'da gerçi bazı erkeğinin bazı Xtay'ın bazı yerleri de ruhsat kılınan bilen bu Şarkı Türkistan ve Tibet'ten ayıdı eğer. Bu e, kol tek düz gülü bulmaydıgan bir rayın da parla batıdı. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to try and highlight some uh, important points in the interest of time. Then, um, hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Um, in terms of religion, um, since the early 2000s. Government officials have demonized Uyghurs' belief in Islam as terrorism and extremism, no longer just separatism as they had previously stated. Since the tragic events of September 11th, and in the years since Beijing was awarded the Olympics, Chinese government officials have increasingly used Uyghurs' belief in Islam to portray them as fundamentalists and terrorists. Religious extremism has been placed alongside separatism and terrorism as one of the so-called three evil forces. Chinese authorities have demonized Uyghur Muslims in order to place them with, within the context of the global war on terror and justify the intensified persecution carried out against them. 
Um, moving on to bilingual education. Uh, in the past decade, and particularly since 2002, the Chinese government has pursued what it calls the bilingual education system in East Turkestan, aimed at removing Uyghur as a language of instruction and implementing what is actually a monolingual Chinese language education system, undermining the linguistic basis of Uyghur culture. The so-called bilingual education drive contrasts with past policies that provided choice for Uyghur parents in their children's languages of instruction and violates Chinese law, which stipulates that children have a right to be educated in the Uyghur language. Uh, bilingual education has been supported through heavy government investment. Remarks by Xinjiang Party Secretary Wang Luchuan at the National Party Congress last year indicate that provincial authorities, with the support of the central government, plan to invest 3.7 billion yuan in order to implement bilingual education programs in 85% of the region's kindergartens in the next three to five years. As the Han population has increased in East Turkestan, Han individuals have also received a greater share of the economic benefits from East Turkestan's growth, including economic and employment opportunities not available to Uyghurs. While the Chinese government asserts that bilingual education will provide ethnic Uyghurs with the Mandarin language skills necessary to succeed in China's competitive job market, many Uyghur graduates who are fluent in Mandarin Chinese report facing employment challenges due to rampant ethnic discrimination among employers. As one former Uyghur teacher recalled, when he traveled with his Chinese-speaking students to job fairs, um, his Chinese-speaking Uyghur students to job fairs, they observed signs flatly stating, we don't want minority people. <clears throat> Excuse me. The bilingual education drive has been accompanied by a disparaging view of Uyghur language and culture. Wang Lichuan uh, justified bilingual education policies by saying, quote, the languages of the minority nationalities have very small capacities and do not contain many of the expressions in modern science and technology, which makes education in these concepts impossible. This is out of step with the 21st century. Officials often speak of the need to raise the quality of minority students using bilingual education so that minorities can begin to receive the benefits of a modern education. Um, in terms of the issue of the transfer of Uyghur women from East Turkestan to Eastern China, uh, the policy primarily draws women from the southern majority Uyghur areas of East Turkestan, targeting marriage-aged women between the ages of 16 to 25. Local leaders who do not comply with the policy are threatened with removal from their posts. The young women are placed into inhumane work conditions and with employers that do not honor work contrasts, contracts. While the exploitation of young female workers is prevalent throughout China, there are some things that make the situation different for Uyghurs. For instance, uh, 